Right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to today's discussion. Uh, we're going to talk about something interesting. So today's menu is about happiness, happiest country. So we're not going to talk about what is the happiest country. We're going to talk about a news article which came out on 10th of March 2024 in NST. So the report says that Malaysia is holding the fifth position in, in the happiest index country. So that brought us to think about the significance of being a happiest country for individual itself. So we all know, as is introduction, Finland is popularly known for world happiest country in many reports. So apparently I saw in one report six times in a consecutively six times Finland's the best. So they are known for high quality of good life, uh, good education, um, having a good healthcare system and one amazing thing is apparently is they have a very good uh, um, nature, uh, element of nature and ecosystem there. So the report says why Finland is the best. Right? So the uh, report says they have a very robust education system. So the okay. education system is very innovative and very creative. It's not a static system. It's a dynamic system which falls into um, their team to be very innovative in technology. So in order to be innovative in technology, they need to have a robust uh, education system. And that's why you have uh, companies like Nokia and so many other uh, apparently technological based companies there because the, the education system is so robust. The other re the report also mentioned that they have very good outdoor activities, recreational, the people that are encouraged to take care of the nature, uh, work-life balance. And another interesting fact is they have a sauna culture. Apparently, in Finland, they have 2 million saunas, which is almost more than or nearing to their population. So the sauna culture is very good. Sauna, apparently, uh, it's their way to release stress and to mix with people. Uh, and they also have very good social welfare system. And a very good concept why Finland has been six times in a row is equality for all in all aspects of their life. Um, they have achieved it. So we're not going to talk more about Finland. We're not going to talk a lot about other countries, but we're going to talk about how it impacts individual level. So my question would be, <coughs> if you compare a person who lives in this happiest country, or even before we go there, what is this happiest country index? How, how do they measure? <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. It's exciting. I'm excited to know that also because happiness is what something that we are all pursuing. <clears throat> the funny part of, about happiness is um, that's a pursuit of happiness. Where did happiness go? Okay. I think it's still there within, but we lost it in the search of something else, maybe. <clears throat> so uh, I did some, you know, uh, research and all that. So let's talk about happiness uh, study. So happiness study, uh, according to uh, Gallup. Because they have different, different kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, um, uh, way they are measuring happiness. So, what uh, Gallup says is that there are basically six uh, key variables they look for. Based on these key, six key variables, they see how the country is performing. And then they, they, they measure through their polling and all that stuff. It's called Gallup World Pool. So, it talks about number one, income, GDP per capita. So, income really plays a role. We spoke about it mm -hmm. in our previous podcast. Mm -hmm. How the... Uh, the currency is, uh, you know, dwindling and mm -hmm. what's the take on people's mental aptitude and resilience, right? Uh, the next one is talking about social support, <coughs> how they're being supported socially, which is a big thing. Um, socially, if I'm feeling safe, I'll perform better. If I'm feeling threatened, I'm going to keep it to myself, mm. me, me and my family kind of thing. Healthy life expectancy, something we should talk about. Uh, this is the blue zone concept and freedom to make life's choices. Uh, and, uh, you know, without a gun pointing to the head, you can choose certain things. Generosity uh, and freedom from corruption, mm. which is something uh, is, is part very, of index. exactly, these are six key areas Gallup looks at. So, um, based on that, uh, they actually do a polling and then they get the numbers, this and that. Uh, what I know is that for Malaysia, they actually had uh, another um, way of measuring. Uh, they all good uh, there's nothing good or bad about anything it's just you know 
getting the polls done. In Malaysia, uh, the one that uh, they were doing is just one second, Gallup. Global Mind Project, if I'm correct. So they use Global Mind Project and there's some difference on how it works. Maybe we'll go into it later. But this is how it's being measured, six key areas based on Gallup uh, World Poll. Uh, because they are the biggest, I guess. Mm. And then they come up with these numbers, uh, these countries. As you said, Finland has been uh, number has been number one for the past six years. Mm. 2023, I don't know 2024 yet. But I'm super happy that Malaysia is the fifth mm. uh, happiest country and I'm so proud of it. Uh, I'm all for it. Mm. Yeah, what so Bhutan? <laughs> I read somewhere Bhutan was once first. Mm. Yeah. So how did they overtook Finland? It's interesting. What what I know is Bhutan apparently uh, is a country where they look into people's um, happiness more, people's uh, uh, spirituality more compared to material mm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So they focus on that. And that's yes. why in Bhutan itself, they have a concept called uh, zero carbon footprint. Not, yes. uh, no, sorry, negative carbon negative. footprint, not even zero. Yes. Um, and happiness index also yeah, is part of the policy. Part of the policy. So, yeah, yeah. So that's how things are. So, so let me ask you this question. So, if a person stays in a country which is one of the top five or top three of this in this index of happiest country, mm -hmm. and comparing to another person who's living on the opposite side of the scale, what are the difference? I think again that we we go back to this same framework by looking at the key variables itself. It should be able to answer to looking at both the polarities. If a country is having good income, uh, it has a good social support. Uh, psychologically, you have enough uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors. The schools are well taken care. Education system is good. Healthy life expectancy where the proper subsidies are given in a proper way. Uh, where, you know, uh, healthy food are being subsidized and uh, non-healthy food, you have to pay premium then you're actually doing a choice architecture to get people to get what mm. they want, which is a very important thing. Similarly, freedom to make life choices, all that thing, they are polarities. If a country is practicing all that generosity, you know that you know the, the country is doing well. Example, if let's say the country is rich in uh, natural resources and it's making the education free, it's making the healthcare free, generosity is there, people tend to be happier because they know I'm paying tax, but everything is taken care. My kindergarten to PhD is all taken care so I can study. I can just walk into any hospital. The hospital is just amazing. Mm. Just like all the private hospitals, I can just walk in and I don't have to pay. Whatever the case, everything is taken care. Generosity based on how it's being done, right? So, and uh, freedom from corruption. If all this index, when they look at it, you can just look at the polarities. The countries who are happy, they tend to curb this better compared to the countries which are not happy because it's related. That's why they came up with these six key areas to look at. I think that's how we can look at whether the country is happy or not. Because it, just imagine we are, we are in a place where uh, it's rampant in, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you call, uh, her life expectancy is low. Uh, and let's say the social support is not there. You're always feeling threatened. Uh, you feel like you don't have you can't make choice. You feel that you're always burdened and mm. you're sidelined. Mm, mm. uh, so just imagine uh, and not much of generosity. So just imagine when we're talking about it itself, suddenly we feel yucky. Mm. So we know that, you know, in the countries where the trend is like that, then people tend to be like that. And I think that falls nicely into the uh, the poll that they're doing, uh, doctor. I think what I know is um, based on the Finland uh, model, a person staying, assuming it's Finland, so the anxiety and stress level will be significantly maybe reduced or, or maybe zero uh, to a level where it's manageable. Mm. So a person stays there, feels more happy. That's why the stress level is low. Mm. Uh, why? I think it's because the mental health awareness is super high. So they mm. focus the policy, the government policy, the, the healthcare system pays strong attention to mental health awareness. So everyone is aware of mental mm. health. So... Uh, so when everyone is aware of mental health, they, is, they talk about techniques and coping strategies for problems. Mm. So openly they discuss about it. So I think a person lives in that country well worse in mental health awareness. Not only that, a person stays there, I also believe that they have a very high, um, what do you call that, a uh, high level of trust towards the community and the government because they know the government's policies are meant to make them happy. So they know the policies are meant to make them happy, they trust more. 
and they trust more than they have they don't mind paying more tax because they know the money is going back to them in the form of education or healthcare mm. in, into their happiness um, program itself as compared to a person in the other side of the spectrum he or she has to struggle for for financial stability because maybe the economy is not stable uh, or maybe there's a, a social inequality mm-hmm. injustice to certain segments of the community or in adequate access to mental health or even general health care itself so it's about survival so when someone is on a survival mode of course happiness is taken a seat back so i think of person lives in these two polarities then the ex- yeah yeah they experience different things absolutely does this mean that all this boils down to certainty and uncertainty uh, i think it boils down to equality equality so just now when you say generosity it boils down to looking at a person as another being mm. rather than you are different from me um, so if you are another being then then the support will be there yeah. the support will be there the, the trust will be there so i think it's about equality um, equality which is a bit difficult uh, but most countries which have been um, uh, in that higher segment of the index happiness index have some element of equality look at compare between finland and us we all know us is also a very developed country one of rich nation uh, i think compared to finland us gdp i think is higher yep. but yet you have high crime rates in us uh, uh, i'm sure us is not even one of the top 10 in the happiness uh, index so finland is doing something different so it's not the money alone it's not the money alone it's not the money alone hmm. but <clears throat> maybe the people know that the money is being channeled into their mental health awareness mental health programs um, um yeah yeah so this brings Absolutely. this brings me to what are the societal or um cultural factors that can contribute to better mental health um absolutely you know uh, they are like come back to um our country we need to look at the how is the support when someone is having uh, since we're talking about mental health and all that stuff obviously uh, if someone is resilient they tend to cope up with whatever that's coming happy country or not happy country mm. they'll know that they'll be able to be okay they'll find happiness even when the flower blooms <laughs> uh, compared to only when i have my millions mm. so the resilience part so that's where i think uh, people uh, all of us need to find ways to upskill ourselves there are a lot of stuffs out there plus the policies i think malaysia is now slowly but surely talking about mental health uh, because wherever we go we, when we talk about it with the initiative that we're doing also people tend to talk about mental health uh, without having so much of stigma compared to last time uh, i think that's a good sign i just that the numbers uh, when we look at the numbers the uh, the, the train uh, people to handle this the numbers are quite low uh, so i'll i'll try to fill up the number while we're having this conversation i know uh, there was a st- there was a statistic done in february 2022 i guess uh, I'll, i'll we can put the link later uh, they say we need to have around uh, 3000 uh, uh, psychologists or a psychiatrist uh, for a population of 30 million so currently we have around 470 something trained personnel when it comes to uh, psych counselors we have around 9000 plus counselors and out of the 9000 plus counselors approximately 4% are hired in moh and uh, the rest of them are in contractual work or in schools and doing whatever they need to do so when you don't have the basement to be strong we're talking about basement sister if it's weak it'll start collapsing so when someone needs help where do they go to Mm. so the person that they are actually going to have a conversation are they going to give the right kind of support so it does impact because uh, having the right group of people having good conversation uh, which actually comes back to what you were saying just now when we're talking about finland you know the 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 policies are good and uh, whatever that they're doing so meaning the environment is conducive for people to grow happily mm. so similarly in a micro level do we belong to a small little environment called friends family or whatever that is uplifting us because happiness is something 
it, it can be in small or big, doesn't really matter, but it comes from 1%. So, the societal part of it is very important for people to uh, be actively talking about. And uh, one more thing I'm seeing is that um, we, you spoke about US, you spoke about Finland. So, my question to you, Doctor, uh, does why where does being inclusive and exclusive comes in this? Because uh, if we are in a part of a very exclusive kind of things, I'm from this sect, you're from that sect, so we can't get along. Okay, you don't deserve certain things. I get only oh. this much if you're coming from there. So that is definitely talking about being exclusive. Being inclusive is how you can bring everybody together and for a greater future, we are working on it. So what is your take on that, doctor? And it's how does it affect deep inside? It boils down to inequality. Mm -hmm. So one group or a sect will say uh, it's not fair or not equal. So the other group will say it's not fair or equal. It's, it's my right. So it's a very sticky situation. So it's a societal stigma or even societal perception on that inequality or inequality. It's a barrier towards happiness uh, if based on these indexes. Yeah. Um, uh, can you just change that overnight? I don't think so. It takes generations to change an, a, a, a way of life. It's, it has become a way of life. So I think the idea would be to identify the limitation in that society mm -hmm. and how do you go around it to create mm -hmm. happiness within your community, within yourself, within the individual himself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I believe when it comes to this segmental in society. But <clears throat> I also believe that a proper work-life balance can contribute to happiness in the society. But work-life balance is a very um, nice word. You know, everyone talks about work-life balance, but it's not easily implemented. In order to have a work-life balance, the corporate sector, the government sector, the policies needs to be in tune to work-life balance. They should actually spell it out. People do talk about it, corporates do talk about it, but they don't practice it, I don't mm -hmm. believe. Um, so in, in Finland, what I read was, Apparently, the work-life balance is so good that the, the a, a young family with a small baby or whatever age, they have uh, certain working hours. You can you can stay at home and work from home uh, or you can take certain amount of leave because they emphasize on um, the importance of having a stable family. Because of a stable family, you have stable generations, stable kids, and you have stable kids, the economy will flourish. Mm. So in other words, everything starts from home. So they have a very good work-life balance mm. uh, principle. I also believe that uh, in order to have a good happiness community or person in future, a person should have faith in the healthcare system. Mm. Healthcare system is just not should not be fragmented. It means if I person if a person has mental health issues, it should be under one roof. Everything provided. Uh, do we that do we have that here? It's just like you see now, not enough number of psychiatrists, psychologists, mm. or counselors. So you can't and if a person walks into any of our government hospital for counseling or even psychologists, it takes time. The waiting queue is long. So that is a limitation. Yeah. Um, um so these countries who have made it to the top five of these uh, indexes, they have very good healthcare system for mental health and general health. Mm -hmm. Um but even another is Cultural norm, just like what you say is now. If one particular culture says, this is my sect, another culture says, this is my sect. So if they have adopted a cultural system which is promoting inequality, then that is a barrier. But to break the barrier, it's like I said, it's not very difficult. So if a cultural norm, if the community itself emphasizes on work-life balance or emphasizes on uh, emotional, being expressive emotionally or prioritize mental health itself mm -hmm. then it makes a lot of difference for example mm -hmm. in our culture here we talk about prioritizing mental health which is something new but it's not widespread yet and um, now only people are talking about being expressive uh, expressing your emotions um, uh, in the past people say you know you have something is you, you just share among your family members someone close to you and it's a stigma taboo yeah uh, now people are coming out, yes, slowly. Um, but I think these are the factors that uh, plays a role to mm. shape the individual. Mm. Just now you mentioned that um, initiatives that, that 
you are doing to promote happiness? What 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 do you mean by initiatives? The the initiative that we work on is basically, uh, as you know, we have uh, the reset program that runs. Over there, our whole idea is there's two part to it. One is basically let's talk because one of the things that people need is just talk. Um, a lot of people just need a friend, just sit down and have a conversation. You don't need to go to a counselor because it's also like what you said, stigma. What if the person is judging me? Once I've said the person knows about me, can I be looking at the person the same way or will the person look at me the same way like before? So because of that, uh, the social norm and all that, a lot of people tend to suppress because they don't have a place to go and have a conversation. That's why I said when we have a group of people who can actually sit down and have a conversation without being judged itself is a good thing. I'm just sharing. I call it a mental weight loss session. Mental because, weight loss session. Yeah, the, the moment when you let go, when you, the whole idea is about expressing things up. Uh, when you're able to express, Gabo Mati says this, the source of majority of the illness is suppression. And you need to be able to express it out and you need to be authentic about it. So positive anger is good. Because you're letting it go, but in a, in a, in a positive way. Uh, if someone is hitting you, you don't like, you have to tell them. It's a positive anger. Rather than you keeping it, keeping it, and it's eating you instead. Because you know very well how the whole hormone system plays its role. Not playing havoc. It's actually playing its role. Its role. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. And the person who's actually doing it is us. This mind and body works, right? So we have uh, Reset. Uh, in that, we have a Reset app where, number one, it talks it, it's first about speaking. First, understanding this growth mindset, gratitude, and the way and you can express without being, uh, nobody will be able to comment on whatever that you're expressing. So people are just expressing their, whatever they're seeing, whatever goodness, whatever anger, whatever they're just letting go. And they are also part of a group of people called Happiness Circle, where we train these people to become zappers and run their own little happiness circle. It can be in their, at their home itself with their family members. It sounds so like Facebook. I can do that in Facebook, right? You can. The only challenge is that Facebook has people who are keyboard warriors also. Mm. People that you don't know. They might just, and you know the number of things that's happening. The suicide rate, there was, uh, I think there was a few years back. Someone said, should I leave or not? Uh, mm. Yes or no, they're supposed to type. Mm. And there were lots, a lot of people say, uh, if, if, you, if, I, if you want me to commit suicide, hit this button. If you want me to leave, hit this button. Mm. And people had, she had more people telling jump mm. that she committed suicide. Oh, she did? Uh, the, just imagine, the, yeah, it happened in Sabah or Sarawak, I don't know where. Oh. I can't remember. I, I'm not sure with the detail, but it happened. You can do the search. So the thing is that, that's how it is. Now, the thing is that, the person who actually did that polling, do you think he has any feeling towards it? Because he's far. So that's why what do you mean, far? Their far means they're away from the person who requested. They don't even have okay, any okay, kind okay, of okay, attachment. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no emotion. Yeah. Will I be hurting the person? So people just that's why when you put comments out, uh, we have seen some some significant names also. I think there was an uh, issue when a badminton player did something and uh, I think a politician said something. I'm sure he didn't mean it, but because of his compulsive nature, he just hit it. And I'm sure the way, the moment he sent it out, you would have felt, damn. <laughs> and obviously the thing came and he actually apologized. Why should you do that? So in, in Reset app, there's no comment. You just let go, let go, let go. Just let it go, right? Because the most important thing is letting it out. That's the most important thing. And then the next part of it we just launched is what we call connect. People also started asking, I know you have an SOS button. I, I, people can direct me to go somewhere. But what I need is someone to talk to. And I'm okay to pay some amount to talk to a professional, a counselor, a, a therapist or a coach. So we just started this connecting where people can become counselors and they can basically be found in Reset app with their own initiative to find out who they are, read their review, if it's good, connect with them and have a conversation. I think in Japan, doctor, I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, in Japan, they have um, counselors, I guess, they just listen. Mm. They just listen. Just imagine how cool is that. Mm. Now, here I want to ask you a question. Someone is actually sharing a lot of things, a lot of things. They're just talking, talking, basically they're dumping a lot of things and you're just listening. Does it go into the subconscious mind for the person who actually listens? So how would their life be? I don't know. I always wanted to ask that. 
I think it does if the person comes from a judgmental view. The person okay. is trying to trying to analyze what 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 the other person is talking about mm. and trying to use his or her experience, her thoughts process to to engage in that experience. Mm. So what happens then the interaction will start uh, and certain things will subconsciously uh, trigger within themselves. That is why I think some people who are very judgmental, the moment they hear certain things being dumped on them, they 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 get angry or get annoyed or uh, again to be judgmental is not it's not easy at all. You know to just keep quiet and listen nothing because we are so used to to say something about something. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's difficult to be quiet. It's difficult to be quiet. But I was just thinking now, happiness. What does happiness actually mean? <laughs> um, I mean, if you go to a psychiatric ward, some of them are very happy. So, is that happiness? What does happiness actually mean? It's such an elusive word, right? Yeah. How you define happiness? Um, it's an emotional state. Yeah. Um, if you want, I can chat GPT. Yeah, for yeah. You. I think you can chat. I, <laughs> what I is, no, why not? I wonder just, what's, what we're is, so used to the word happy. Yeah. But what does happiness actually mean? Let's see. Yeah. What is happiness? Hmm. What does he say? Are you ready? Ah. Happiness is a complex and subjective concept that encompasses various positive emotion, life satisfaction and overall well-being. While it can be challenging to provide a universally agreed upon definition due to its subjective nature, Happiness generally refers to a state of contentment, joy, and fulfillment in one's life. Mm. So basically, that's it. It's contentment. When you're feeling contented. Yeah. yeah. I think you're happy. I think that is something very exciting. Um, a lot of uh, these, uh, you know, I think uh, gurus speak about this. Ekatoli speaks about this. Ramana Maharishi speaks about this. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Deepak Chopra speaks about this. Sadhguru speaks about this. Shri Shri talks about this. Many, many people. Uh, Tony Robbins, I don't know whether he speaks about it also. I think maybe. And uh, a lot of these gurus, they say, um, being in a state where with your true self, you're so happy, but there's, you're not bursting out in happiness. It is just mm. nothing. Mm. Could be chat GPT, got it, contentment. Mm. Just I think happiness that. is every um, human's um, innate nature. Every human seek happiness, and every human moves away from pain. We move away from pain towards pleasure. So pleasure is a form of happiness. Uh, so we naturally, intrinsically, we move towards that. Just like how plants move to sunlight, we move towards happiness. Absolutely. So we will do whatever it takes to be happy. Mm. But then that creates. A dilemma. What if a, per, a next a person next to you is not happy about your action because mm. it makes you happy? So, so there must be a boundary for the happiness. Uh, because, if, for example, if you feel happy taking a gun and shooting around, but that's that's not a good happiness. That's that's absolute negative happiness. Correct. So, how do we define the boundaries of happiness? Yeah. So, I think that's where governments and and, and policymakers have laws. Uh, I mean, you can be happy within a certain boundaries. Absolutely. Uh, but is that authentic for that person? Uh, it's There's very something Michael Logier said, which is exciting. Maybe we can relate it back. <coughs> Michael Logier said, um, <coughs> happiness is just like a ping pong ball submerged in, under the water, pressed down. And the nature of the ping pong ball, I'm talking about a real nice, good, good quality ping pong ball. The nature of it is to pop out. So, what is keeping it down is basically layers of things that we have programmed. I think when we speak about the Gallup um, poll, the six key areas you're talking about, basically they are layers when they start peeling, mm. it pops up. Mm. So, the countries with uh, happiness being submerged, they have more layers of this not being peeled. Mm. So, you're peeling that uh, income thing, you're peeling that society, you're peeling the healthcare thing, you're peeling the you know, I'm free to choose, you're peeling the corruption. So suddenly, you say, hey, it's good. 
So if that's the case, I think everyone, if they look at that, they'll be able to do that in any country actually. Mm. Just working on this, just put some amazing... I think it can only happen if the people-centric. Mm. The people are important and when they're happy, they tend to perform better because study shows uh, in the book called Happiness Advantage by Sean Accor, he says, when someone is happy, what is happy? Happy is basically is a feeling, but what drives happiness is positive emotion. Positive emotion that comes from positive thinking. So they're all connected. Now, when you're able to, in positive emotion is where you have the hormones, the dead dopamine, oxytocin is working. Now, at that time, the productivity goes up by 31%. These are numbers. Sales goes up by around 38% if you're in sales performance. Your creativity goes up by three times. So just imagine living in a society like that. Rising tide rise all ships. Mm. It doesn't choose you uh, from that sect, you be down, eh? you sampan, you can be there. Only Titanic can go up. It doesn't, mm. everything goes up. True, true. Th then, have you wondered this? Why young children, young kids, they are so happy. They are in their world of themselves. Whereas adults look for the happiness. Very for children, they are in that happiness thingy. Yeah. Um, but not for long. Not for long. So and then happens? they get submerged, right? So what happens? I think the layers comes. The layers, the layers come. We know this is basically programming. Um, for children, what I know, you will know this more. Zero to seven years is the most important thing. Bill, Bruce Lipton talks about this. He says it's a hypnotic stage. And zero to seven, they learn everything. Meaning they hypnotize, they go, your area. They just take it. The reason why they do it from 0 to 7 is because after 7, they use the data program to live with the society they are part of. So they can't do something really, really dumb when they are young because they'll be outcasted from the society. So then they learn. So they mm. think uh, lying by their parents is the gospel truth where they, for them, lying is natural. Mm. So that's how it comes. So if they're living in an environment like what you said when we first started, when you create an environment like that, happiness comes as a byproduct. So when the parents create an environment like that, the kids become like that. That's why, you know, after growing, uh, you know, all adult this and that, someone might say, you're just like a father, you know. Mm. Really? Yeah? No. Mm. But actually, yeah. So we are all born happy. We are all born as a baby. Mm, no mm. program. Then the society programs. It's quite interesting. He said, Father, I had one person who came to me recently because he feels lost in his life. So after the session, we found out that um, um, he has always been feel, feeling empty. The reason because as a child itself, he has been uh, emotionally and uh, um, I won't say tortured, but he said he would emotionally uh, deprived from love from the father itself and, and there's some amount of physical abuse. Uh, but he mentioned that it's not physical abuse intentionally, um, but father used to be a drunken person. So at the age of three itself, as young as three years old, he used to, father would kick him out of the house. Hmm. He'll be uh, under rain outside the house. So what would a three, four years old, five years old kid know what to do? Um, so the happiness was robbed from him. Over the years, he eventually learned stuff, he got better, better, better and stuff. But but happiness has been always uh, um, something he's looking for. So, um, there was interesting, interesting thought when you mentioned father because as a child, a child should have everything. But just now you mentioned child are born pure and innocent. So, they're happy intrinsically. They are, naturally, they are that. But when the society or environment or family puts something on top of that, the happiness disappears. Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, right? I have one question to you, which has been burning. I read it in a book called Diamond Cutter, written by um, one of a, mo uh, he's a monk, Michael Roach or something. He said, in a flick of a finger, 65 frames of the surrounding gets into your subconscious mind. Mm. It just goes oh. So, if it's true, it's written in the scripture it seems. If it's true, so it's not only what you're seeing, what you're smelling, not only the five senses, it's also what you're, what you're thinking and whatever that's happening around you, your spider senses also picks mm, it up. Mm, mm. So, just imagine, we are just 
we bombard it mm with with did you knowing or unknowing the things actually going into your subconscious mind mm. and most of the thing that goes into your subconscious mind then stealth mode they don't come and say excuse mm-hmm. me yeah, doctor yeah. can i come in yeah, yeah. anybody home doesn't say like that it just i think that's where awareness is very important right mm-hmm. so just imagine how many of us all of us included have been leading a life being super unconscious and letting all these programs to go in hence we are happy or unhappy and we are relying on the environment and the key mm. factors to peel it off yeah, yeah so i think these countries with the happiness thing are peeling it better i'm happy malaysia is doing that um in the, i'm sure we'll we'll all feel it the happiness i think the, the would love to see the study so how it is based on that indexes and studies uh, uh, parameters in order for the individual to feel happy Mm-hmm. something needs to be done to them environment mm-hmm. society government policies corporate whatever yeah why should we come to that stage why not the individual himself take steps to be happy uh um so if that is the mind frame what do you think about that individual himself takes steps to be happy despite the circumstances i think it's a tall order because if you look at the world majority of the people are employees So if an employee you are part of a system where you wake up you go to work you come back you sleep you wake up you go to work and you do that for 9 to 5 Monday to Friday which is a clock work so if you ask and you were in a job before I was in a job also very little time to think about anything else and these things need to have a thinking ability to sit down quiet for a while and then only it kicks in yeah. hey mm. so the nature is like that so that's why when the policies are there it basically help becomes one more aiding platform mm. to aid this it becomes a catalyst rather than something that is actually smothering them so whatever is being done if it's a catalyst then it will grow mm. So to a person is very difficult it's all based on the invitation whether they want to move or not. Mm. How many of the invitation? people are there invitation to sit down quietly mm. wonder mm. you know like a child like a child that's what it does it doesn't go on a hey, morning after wake up I have this uh, sure. I have to make breakfast and then I have to catch a train I need to go I need to go and do meet KPI I have five uh meetings to attend and then I and I don't work I only work at 5 o'clock because all the meetings have finished. Mm. So all the things happening and then you come back if you are if you're cooking you have to cook and then you have to prepare the kids and then next morning you wake up and do, you know it's when we're talking about it itself is tiring mm. where do they have time to but what if the awareness is there that that person okay now I need to be happy uh, environment around me is is I'm I'm fighting the tide so I make a determination I need to be happy uh and what if the person takes time okay fine i start to be more self aware of myself start to be self reflection on myself my thoughts my 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 past i think that will be a first step yep. to sit down quietly and reflect upon themselves yep uh and then the process of of next step next step will come in absolutely right. i think like what we spoke in the previous sessions and we always speak about awareness is key Mm. when they already feeling yucky they should stop and think why am i feeling yucky maybe sh- i'm doing something wrong i always ask myself when i'm attracting negative things coming to myself i in the past i i just do i just feel yucky and just move on now i ask this question what vibration have i sent to attract this so, so i'm this i'm the transmitter mm. so meaning i'm resonating something so how does the app increases awareness uh basically uh, to aid like a training wheel three times will give you notifications hello you're so busy fine la you do whatever but morning i'll come and ask how would you want your day to be at 5 o'clock i'll ask what are you grateful for at 9 o'clock night i'll ask how happy are you if you're not doing anything if you're just answering that itself you're already in that path of at least getting some positive habits putting in things of what you want what am i grateful for and how happy i am and we have this happiness index we spoke about bhutan happiness index in the event one day malaysia says we would like to measure everyone's happiness rather than going and doing polling if they want real data 
reset app when whole Malaysia basically downloads and use the reset app and put their kegembiraan or you know their happiness index will be able to see how happy in a very dynamic way. Mm. So currently it, it's something can be done but just that again it needs policy to help. How, how does happiness um, translates to a person's um, person's resilience coping strategy towards difficulties in life? Again, uh, are, are they separate things? I think it comes back to the hormones, right, doctor? Because when you're happy, you secrete different kind of hormones. Sure. The triggers are the same. When, when, uh, just like me, when I go to hospital, you know about me, I get white blood hypertension, right? When I go there, my, my whole uh, program is a bit different. I run in a different oil in my body, I guess. So I tend to see the same trigger in a different way. So if I'm happy, if anyone is happy, the trigger is going to come anyway. I'll be more conscious to respond mm. compared to and you realize when you go and see people at work they are erupting poop, 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 little bit it's like the saber tooth came every time it's the same magnitude there, but the hormones don't know the hormones are doing what it's supposed to do it's not telling no no it's bad for you I'm not going to come out now it doesn't <clears throat> I think happiness how happiness helps persons be resilient because how is if a person is happy he or she has a positive mindset already. Mm -hmm. If you have a positive mindset, you have a better outlook of life, even mm. though it's, it's tough. So you keep pushing yourself mm. in a positive way. So happiness leads to resilience in that way, yep. positive mindset. Yep. If a person is happy, indirectly, it shows that a person has a very good social support around him mm. or her. Or he has created a very good social support yes. around him. So that keeps him more resilient, more mm. supportive. Mm. Um, if a person is happy, there must be a reason what or how he's doing it. So there must be some techniques, some method he or she is doing to mm. maintain a state of happiness. So mm. he has some coping strategies, yeah. stress reducing techniques or methods, whether you can call it meditation, mindfulness, Absolutely. or even yoga or simple exercise yeah. or just playing chess or just sleeping. It's his method of, of coping towards resilience. Um, if he is happy, yep. or the person is happy, the person looks forward for, I mean, the person is more receptive towards mental health awareness projects or programs. Yep. Uh, so that keeps them more resilient mm. uh, and they have a good sense of purpose and meaning in life. Because mm. mm. um, that drives the happiness. Okay, I, yeah. I'm happy today, so I have a sense of purpose. I need to do something meaning. Yeah. Uh, sense of belonging in the community, family, workplace. Um, so if you have a sense of belonging, you want to do more mm -hmm. and, and you feel rather than I have to do, it's like I need to do. Mm, willingness, willingness is there. Mm. So when you have a sense of belonging, even in a family or even community organization, it creates a positive impact. You feel confident. Uh, confident. And if a person is happy, th there is a reduced, I think, stigma within themselves to talk about problems. Because they find it, hey, how come I'm not happy now? So something has shifted. So I need to figure things out. I can't do this alone. I need to talk to some people. I need to figure things out. So that reduces stigma. So if one person can do that, imagine if 10, 100 people. So uh, um, it helps people to move forward. Exactly. So that's how happiness is, is yeah. important, I think. Uh, but again, the definition of happiness varies from person varies, to person. Varies, yeah. So even, a, like I said, a person in uh, psychiatry ward, some of them are very happy. Uh, but is that a productive happiness? So it, mm, it's subjective. Very subjective. Um, it's subjective. It's subjective. Even you can see monks, for example, they're happy in their own way, but they're not excited. They're not cheerful. They don't appear to be bubbly, but they are contented. Mm. Um, so happiness is a very subjective. Look at a child, one year old child. Child is not contented. Child is looking for more happiness. Yeah. Excited, jumping around, playing around. So is that happiness? Yes. Yeah. So it's not contentment. Yeah. So I think I think we find an exact definition of happiness. It's not going to happen to find a definition. Instead of looking for definition, be happy. Work towards happiness. Absolutely. I, I just want to ask you, um, you, we spoke about child and we spoke about child in uh, Finland also. The way they stud study is play. Mm. Um, and uh, we brought it up here also. We spoke about child. 
there's an element called curiosity which is very important i guess mm. i think that's what when we are becoming adult we are losing because whenever we are curious we tend to lose everything yeah because we we told told curiosity kills the cat yeah so. cat has nine lives <laughs> so i think we can go for eight curiosity and maybe kill a cat later so curiosity is what drives passion according to the book flow um it's a psychology said that curiosity drives passion passion drives participation willing to do the work increases productivity which increases profitability so if in our education system which in a time of our own we we might be talking about our education system if the education itself not giving life to curiosity then how we're going to hit profitability at the end so i think that is something all of us need to pay attention be child like again i think we have to peel off that onion layers again yeah. and let the ping pong ball to pop up like what michael logie said it was so profound the way he said which is true um and we have a true nature like what you said we are always happy and it always wants to go to where the nature it naturally fits and we have gone so far away and we hence there's a big business called pursuit of happiness taking place a lot of books telling how to find happiness how to find happiness yeah and happiness who lost it yeah it's always been there A- exactly mm 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 true 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 so yep yep so how would um whoever listening to this if they interest okay happiness this is something new Okay, how can I work towards happiness? So I think the first step is to increase self-awareness of who you are, what you are, what your your boundaries, what your circumstances, and a good place to start I think would be the app, uh, reset app. Uh, so give it a try, uh, um, give it a try, or simple things. Talk to someone about happiness. Talk to a professional counselor, healthcare provider. Talk to a friend. Talk to someone who shares the same thoughts on happiness or positivity. So it's a good step. From there, um, uh, do your own reading, do your own exploration. Uh, we have YouTube, social media. There's a lot of good stuff there. Also, a lot of rubbish. Uh, <laughs> depends on where you want to go. If you want to go good stuff, a lot of good stuff there. They they can help you a lot. So seek happiness. It come to you because it has always been there. So so. I think thank you for the discussion on happiness. Fantastic. That's an so, amazing thing. Uh, we so, speak about which is I think the oldest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oldest thing ever makes you wonder. Huh? Are animals happy? How how do you know animals happy? Like, if you see a cat, whenever cat is sleeping, I'm sure the cat is happy. Whenever you see a dog wagging its tail, they're happy, they're joyful. But when a dog sleeps, not wagging its tail, it's also happy. I think it's contented. Huh? Uh, hmm. I got what I want for today. I got my food. That's it. I'm yeah. not like I had food, but the plate over there is better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. but the stomach full already, but I'm still eyeing for the brownie that's floating there. True. So I'm not yeah. always grateful about what I have. So maybe a, a individual needs to define himself or herself. Absolutely. What is happiness? Absolutely. And and don't have a rigid definition. Mm. Keep keep it growing. Keep it modifying by itself. So it will keep changing. Exactly. Very dynamic. Exactly. Anyway, thank you everyone. So, thank you everyone doctor. Amazing chat. Yep. So until next time. See you. And if you like to what we discussed, ah, hit the hit button, subscribe and share. Share. Till we catch up again. Until the next menu. <laughs> <laughs>